So how does this thing work? Now, I know you have a lot of questions first, so let's lay down the context. First of all, who am I and how did I get in your house? And those are good questions, but for another time. But first of all, what is this? That's what's called a coloblast, and it's a unique cell found in cone jellies, which are these jellyfish-like blobs that just sort of float around and do nothing. Well, that's not true. They, like all metazoans, big word, the cone jellies move, eat, breathe, and have sex. These guys help with goal number two. Trouble is, most things don't like being eaten, so you gotta take it out of their hands. Or, these are zooplankton, so they don't have hands. The way that comb jellies or tenophores catch their prey is by coating them with mucus to prevent them from moving. Work for the velvet worms. Well, these guys evolved before velvet worms. So now that you're properly primed and curious, let's answer. How exactly does the coloblast help with that? Well, let's go step by step. We start in here, the secretion granules. These guys are little balls that hold the mucus after the proteins making them up have been assembled throughout the cell. When called for, they send their mucus down the radii, these little tubes, to the spheroid body. So called because it's a, it's a body that's it's shaped like a sphere. This is the big container, and it's where things start to heat up. The nucleus, which is attached to the spheroid body, is of course responsible to making sure all of this is going according to plan. Now, if you've ever worked with one of those Play-Doh pasta makers, or a regular pasta maker, or like a... 3D printer, you should know that if you take a ball of something with the consistency of mucus and shove it through a tiny hole, it turns into a thread. This is what's called extrusion, and in coloblasts it forms a giant ball of mucus into what's called a spiral filament. Why is it called that? Well, because it's then wrapped around the main body of the coloblast, which is referred to by two names. The top of it is called the colocyte, and the bottom of it is called the colopod. Although there's no clear cutoff point between the two, it's also coiled up into a spring, which means that there's tension in there and it's just waiting to break free. You may notice that if you tried to make a spring out of Play-Doh, the real dough, it wouldn't bounce back. And you may wonder why the mucus would be any different. Well, the real difference is in scale. At our scale, you can make a spring out of metal. At a more giant scale, you can make a spring made out of rock. At the scale of a coloblast, you can make a spring made out of mucus. And if we went even further, you could make a spring made out of water. The spring is held like that by the plasma bridge. Think of it like when people put holes in paper so that it can tear more easily. This is called perforated paper, but that's not important. And just like perforated paper, it's meant to be torn apart. The system is already barely being held together, and if it brushes up against something, it explodes. The plasma bridge breaks, and all the pent-up energy transforms into a burst of motion, launching the spiral filament away from the cone jelly and trapping whatever hapless organism triggered the attack. And once you've been gooed, that's how you know you're screwed. I didn't like that. The process then resets, and if this were a YouTube short, now would be when the short looped.